Cheney Creek, a small body of water with big implications. This creek runs under Highway 11, an important shipping route in northern Ontario. It is at this location where a 60-year-old bridge sits and deteriorates, and is at risk of cutting off not only the communities along Highway 11, but also half the nation. Highway 11 is often dubbed the Gateway to the North, and the Deshaney Creek Bridge is a massively outdated, yet vital section of that gateway. To keep the North moving, the MTO wants this bridge replaced before catastrophe can strike. That's where the bright minds at Miller come into play. They've designed an arch culvert system to replace the bridge, but there are several challenges in getting that system into place. Basically the bridge is decayed and falling apart as well as the old bridge itself doesn't meet the design requirements now that's slated by the MTO. Along with replacing the bridge and replacing it with an arch culvert, we have to raise the grade of the highway so it fits within the design speed requirements for this area. We have environmental constraints such as the fast moving creek. It's a fisheries creek so we only have a certain timeline we can work in. All the runoff that we're dealing, there's a lot of excavation here, so we have to have measures put in place to keep any uh, sediment from getting into the creek. We just got the shovel breaking in this week. Uh, it's been a long winter of planning and uh, designing, and we're excited to get going. After installing protective measures to keep the creek pure, Miller spends the next few weeks excavating and readying the site as a part of phase one. A major component of this phase consists of installing a water diversion system to keep the creek safe. As you can see, there's a 3,300 mil culvert put in right now. The guys right now are just backfilling up around that. And uh, once they're done finishing that, we're going to divert the creek in through the single culvert and work on installing the second half. Miller also built a new temporary bypass bridge alongside the existing bridge to allow this vital roadway to remain open throughout demolition and construction. With the water diversion in place and the temporary bridge already rerouting traffic, the time has come to eliminate the old bridge. Miller Group made swift work of the old bridge and quickly shift gears to pouring concrete slabs that will provide a solid base for the new bridge footings. The first step is testing the delivered concrete to ensure that it is of sufficient quality to meet Miller's and the MTO standards. And with the all clear, the crew begins to pour the footings. the footings to cure and then is right back at it. First they fill the gap around the footings with riprap and backfill in an effort to raise and level the grade. And then finally, a moment everyone has been waiting for, Miller begins installing the prefabricated arch segments. First, the tricky business of getting them right side up. Nice and easy. Theoretically, she shouldn't come off the ground, right? Easy, easy. Bang on. 
Walk in the park. And with that walk in the park, the first segment can be lifted into place. The first piece is in position and now be held in place by one crane, while another lifts the corresponding piece into position on the other side. The first two segments lock into place. So these are our first sets. As you can see, both these ones are in, and then everything else is built off that. We're installing them in a staggered pattern, so that way you don't need two cranes at all times, just to lock them in, and also for stability-wise, that makes them more of an interlocking system rather than just independent joints all the way down. With the experience gained from installing the first few sections, Miller is able to bang the rest off in an increasingly rapid fashion. Miller and their partners have made quick work of the precast install. They lay in one more piece, and the final two sections arrive on the scene. These pivotal pieces will be lifted into place at the same time in an effort to lock in and level up the ends of the arch. down, one to go. And the storm clouds roll in, making an already tricky task more difficult. The last piece lifts into place, but not so fast. What's holding it up? This last section isn't lining up perfectly. With the storm beating down on them, the team must make some adjustments. Because the final pieces aren't staggered, so they're not going to sit in as well as the rest that we already put in. So it's just a bit of fine tuning, make sure we get it all aligned properly. And finally, we have a lock. The initial misalignment proves to be nothing more than a bump in the road for the Miller Group. It's perfect. Uh, piece is in, a few fine adjustments, and then we'll tie it all together with some chains, make sure she doesn't move, and we'll finish it up. With the fine adjustments completed, the crew can move on to the final phase in this job, getting this section of the highway operational. They start by constructing the wing walls and head walls that will form the openings to the culvert. And in the coming weeks, the Miller Group will backfill and pave the highway over top of this arch culvert. The gateway to the north is back to being fully operational, and the Deshaney Creek is out of harm's way, flowing with the cool waters of the Canadian North. We opened up the road about a week and a half ago, and finishing touches finished up late last week. I'm really happy the way it turned out. The banks look great, the creek's flowing perfect, and the guys work safely, the guys work hard. Cooperation with everyone it just went really well. Once again, the Miller Group has proven that when there's a need for innovative modern solutions, while preserving a piece of this great nation, they'll be there.